with strange bright rims. It seems dark surface material has slipped away, exposing the lighter material below. Nothing like it has ever been seen on Earth. So what's the material made of that's slumping down? What's the process that's causing it to slump off? And it certainly proved to be a much more interesting body upon close examination than we ever thought. Although the surface is a chilly minus 279 degrees Fahrenheit, Galileo's data suggests that just like Ganymede, Callisto can't be frozen solid. It detects a very weak magnetic field, suggesting it too may have an ocean. But the data is confusing. Other instruments aboard Galileo suggest that 125 miles beneath its surface, Callisto consists of a mixture of rock, metal and ice right down to its core. It's another mystery. The standard theory of how moons and planets form says that they should heat up when the material they're made of first joins together. The heat should then separate the rock from the ice. Strangely on Callisto, it hasn't. That would mean it never got really hot in there. How do you make such a large moon and not have it heat up? We still don't really understand Callisto. Like so much of the Jovian system, Callisto raises more questions than it answers. We don't know what's going on inside the moon. We don't even know what material covers its surface. The story of Jupiter's next moon is equally bizarre. Io is the same size as our moon and is the closest of Jupiter's four large moons. It is the most volcanically active body in the solar system, with over 400 volcanoes, up to 124 miles across. If you could have a bird's eye view of Io, it, it would be really extraordinary. You would see these uh, plumes that are hundreds of miles high, these enormous lava flows, and uh, big lava lakes just boiling and bubbling away on this surface that is all really strange and uh, has these colors of a uh, pepperoni pizza. Volcanoes constantly reshape Io's surface. Galileo's pictures are totally different from the ones Voyager sent back some 20 years before. But how can a landscape change so dramatically in such a short space of time? Huge craters seem to come and go. The cause of their disappearance seems to be giant plumes of sulfur-rich gases shooting around 200 miles above the surface. We concluded that it was the plumes that were depositing fine material on the surface and actually erasing these craters over long periods of time. But as with Jupiter's other moons, there is a further mystery. This much volcanic activity requires an immense amount of heat. But where does it come from? Io, 500 million miles from the sun, should be too cold. But clearly, it's not. Could the answer be gravity? Jupiter's gravitational field keeps Io in orbit. But as it goes around, it passes on the inside of Jupiter's other moons. Their gravity pulls Io in the opposite direction. That distorts Io's shape. It's the distortion that creates the heat. As Jupiter's large moons orbit around the planet, they're pulled and pushed and squeezed as they go around in their orbits. And this creates heat, friction, and causes melting within Io of the rock to power its volcanoes. It raises tides on Io, very much like the moon raises tides on the oceans on Earth. Only on Io, the whole surface goes up by over 300 feet. Can you imagine what it would be like on Earth, like here in Los Angeles, if the crust of the Earth was rising 300 feet? It's an astonishing discovery, a world shaped by forces so violent, it's pulled apart like taffy. Yet amazing as it sounds, of all Jupiter's moons, Io may not be the strangest. The next moon on Galileo's path 
Europa. Its surface is covered in strange geological shapes and parallel tracks that cut across the ice. It's an ice world with an extraordinary secret. Could it harbor the ingredients for life? Images of Jupiter's moon Europa from earlier missions reveal a pinkish-white world. But Galileo finds fewer meteor craters than expected. That means something is erasing the craters after they form. Because Europa's surface is ice, scientists believe water could be welling up from below. This moon is so intriguing the team wants a better look. But to do so means spending more time at Europa than planned. The original schedule called for only three flybys of the moon Europa, but the evidence was so compelling that it compelled uh, the mission to be extended in length and to go back several more times. Galileo's first job is to image the moon in greater detail. The question is, how active is Europa's surface? Are the processes that erase impact craters fast or glacially slow? The team begins by assuming the process could take billions of years. That changes fast. I'm listening to them discussing the age of Europa's surface dropping. Oh, well, maybe it's a couple billion years old. And then the next flyby, well, it might even be 100,000 years old. Uh, and then the next flyby, well, it may be currently active. While measuring Europa's magnetic field, Galileo uncovers another mystery. As the moon orbits Jupiter, its magnetic field shifts. Europa must have a conductive layer which allows Jupiter's magnetic field to pass through it. There is only one thing that could cause this, and it's a big surprise for the Galileo team. We were able to interpret these signatures as being produced by a global ocean beneath the surface of the ice. Scientists believe Europa's ocean is vast. It covers the whole globe to a depth of 100 miles, making it the largest body of liquid water in the solar system. If so, the team must first address a fundamental problem. Europa's surface temperature can reach minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Why doesn't such a huge ocean so far from the sun freeze? Astronomers think the answer may be the same one that drives the volcanoes on Io. Jupiter's gravity stretches and compresses the moon, creating heat within. It's the heat that keeps the surface in constant motion. This could also explain some unusual features found on Europa. Galileo images showed that ridges crisscross the surface of Europa. These are bizarre features that travel across the surface for up to a thousand kilometers and typically in pairs. That is, a ridge with a depression in the middle and another ridge. These are bizarre features like nothing we see on the Earth. At first, these ridges are a puzzle, but researchers soon come up with a solution. Planetary scientist Bob Papalardo reproduces the effect with ice blocks in the lab. As Europa is flexed by Jupiter's gravity, its surface bends and cracks and makes fractures through the ice. Well, as it's squeezed and bent, the ice slides back and forth along these fractures. Now this can create heat as these blocks move by one another. And that heat can warm the ice on either side of the block, and that warm ice rises up to form these strange ridges that we see, these tracks that seem to go across the tundra of Europa. Galileo reveals a world in constant motion, evidence of heat hidden below the ice. Flows of material on the surface are possible evidence of ice volcanoes or geysers. Brown-red stains stretch across the ice where it has cracked open 
and salty material from the interior has welled up from below. We see pits and spots and domes on the surface of Europa that might be related to the rise of blobs of warm ice that move up through the shell, sort of like a lava lamp. Heat from the interior of the moon may even drive hydrothermal vents in the ocean. On Earth, hydrothermal vents on the seafloor are hotspots for life. Galileo's data also suggests there's carbon dioxide frozen on Europa's surface, possibly welling up from the ocean below. If so, the find is huge, because CO2 is vital for life. Does this mean there's life on Europa? I'm in the camp that where there's water, there's a very good chance that there's life, and where there's materials for that life to use. And on Europa, we seem to have the materials and we have the water. If we search and find life within the ocean of Europa, that'll be an enormous leap in understanding whether we're alone in the universe or whether life may be everywhere. The search for life is an irresistible lure. Scientists are desperate to go back to Europa, and near the end of the next decade, they hope to launch a groundbreaking mission to orbit the moon. The Europa Explorer will take the first steps toward answering the biggest question of all. Is there life on other worlds? It will survey the ice on Europa's surface. As well as analyzing its structure, it will search for spots where we could one day break through to the ocean beneath. We need to measure the gravity in detail. We need to do radar studies. We need to look at the surface composition. We need to understand the geology. We need to understand that tidal flexing that heats the interior and causes that thick layer of ice to flex with the tidal forces. The explorer's main tool is radar. It will give scientists a 3D map of Europa's crust. This will tell them just how thick the icy shell is how far beneath the surface the ocean is, if it's a global ocean, um, how deep it is, how, how thick the ocean layer is. These are crucial questions. Once scientists know how thick the ice is, the next step is to work out how to get beneath it, and that will mean a completely new mission. A probe that will not only orbit Europa, but land and explore its subsurface ocean. Endurance is already at work in Antarctica. A robotic submarine, it's the first of a new breed of underwater probes that can also operate under the ice. The aim is to create a vehicle that needs no instructions from home. Endurance must make decisions all by itself. Every vehicle we've sent to space so far has the ability to talk back to Earth, get commands from Earth, and have people in the loop. This will be a whole new ball game, and it's something that we're going to be able to test in Antarctica. Endurance is currently investigating a lake hidden under nearly 15 feet of ice in Antarctica. Perhaps one day, a vehicle like this will search for life on Europa. But first, it has to get through the ice. That thick ice cover it takes a lot of energy to melt ice. People don't usually appreciate that. But we'll need some kind of nuclear uh, system that will melt that ice, and it will take weeks, perhaps months, to get through that ice. We might imagine a lander spacecraft that melts its way all the way down to the ocean and explores what's really down there. The discovery of life on another world would be one of the greatest finds of all time. We're not talking about fish or whales or the Loch Ness Monster. We're talking about microbes. Could there be tiny, single-celled organisms within the ocean of Europa? I mean, if you just find bacteria, it would be fascinating. But who knows? You know, maybe there's something more sophisticated. There's something swimming around. Who knows? Even the simplest life forms would have profound implications. If life exists in the ocean of Europa, that would tell us that life probably exists almost anywhere there is a water-rich environment. That would be an amazing discovery.
Jupiter and its moons have already transformed our understanding of our planet.